Hello everyone, my name is Netta and today I'm going to be showing everything you need to know about one of New Zealand's great walks, the Northern Tongariro Circuit. So if you're into tramping, that is trekking and camping, then stay tuned. Tongariro Northern Circuit is one of um, 10 great walks in New Zealand and actually there were nine great walks but just recently, that's in 2019, a new great walk has opened in the southern islands of west coast. So the northern Tongariro circuit is actually located in central North Island in New Zealand and it winds its way past two mountains, Mount Tongariro and Mount Naroho. Um, it is also an established World Heritage Site for its natural beauties and for the cultural importance that it holds to the indigenous um, population in New Zealand called the Maori. And also it is a, a, it's, um, the setting for scenes from the Lord of the Rings and trilogy, so if you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan you will definitely enjoy this trek. So the track is 43.1 kilometers long and it can take um, three to four days to complete depending on how far you go each day. Now we completed the track in December and for those of you who live in the Northern Hemisphere, December is actually summer down here. We completed it in late December and um, it took us um, three nights and four days to complete and on day four we arrived back at Whakapapa village which is where we had actually parked our car. Day one is um, a relatively flat terrain and it's only um, 9.4 kilometers. Day two is going to be your most challenging and strenuous um, hike. Um, it is all uphill um, but you do get to see these beautiful beautiful lakes right at the top so it's definitely worthwhile. Day three is coming back down again so it's relatively downhill and it is a 8.1 kilometer um, trek to your next hut and finally day four is your longest it's 15.4 kilometers um, but it's flat and you've got these beautiful views um, of uh, the mountains all, al all along the way so you will definitely enjoy it. So in terms of some useful tips, information and recommendation. Number one. You can walk the circuit in either direction. We did it clockwise, staying at Mangatepopo hut first. If you do the track clockwise, your most strenuous day, which involves a climb to approximately 1,800 meters, falls on the second day. If you do it anti-clockwise, this will fall on your third day. So, take your pick. Number two. So most mobile networks had coverage at the huts, so you can keep in contact with those you love and post your adventures on social media as you go. Number three. Whether you decide to stay at a hut or take a tent with you, you will be required to book yourself a spot through the DOC website. In 2018, a single tent site cost $15 per night and a bunk bed in the hut cost $36 per person. Both pretty reasonable, I think. The huts you will be staying in have basic facilities like bunk beds and mattresses, gas or log fire heating, kettles, gas cooking stoves, pumped water, toilets, and so on. There were also two portable toilets on the Alpine crossing route from Manga Tepopo hut to Uturira hut. Number four, be prepared to be wowed by the spectacular views. Just check out these photos. Photo courtesy of my friend Mohammed Barzagar. The lakes on day two are definitely worth the climb, but be aware that if it is foggy, you may not get to see them at all. But don't despair, you can come back on the third day, provided the weather is good, and you get up early enough to fit an extra three hours of walk. Number five. Tramping for four days is not for the super hygienic person who likes a proper night's sleep. There are no showers at any of the huts, so prepare yourself to be very smelly by the end of day four. So if you prefer a bit of luxury, meaning a shower, maybe you should try glamping, glamorous camping instead. Alternatively, you can take heaps of deodorant and spray yourself fresh. Also, I can almost guarantee you will not get a proper night's sleep, as you will be sharing your bunk room with another 15 or more people. So if each person gets up to the loo just once, you can do the maths. Number six. Each hut has a resident warden who lives in the hut and who can provide guidance regarding the trek and weather. Here is a photo of Sam, our very cool and informant, informant, um, informative resident warden. And no, we are not plotting a revolution here. We're just talking about fluffy animals. Number seven. 
In terms of what to take with you, the weather on the track, even in summer, can change rapidly, so come prepared. In addition to your basics clothes of layering, a waterproof rain jacket is an absolute must, as, mu as well as um, proper hiking shoes, waterproof covers for your backpacks, gaiters, hats and sunglasses. What I'm going to tell you next is one of my favorite tips. My friend bought with himself some duct tape which came very handy after his tent put broke down on day one because of an overnight storm. He managed to stick them back together in the morning and pitch his tent for the remaining two nights. So if you're going to be staying in a tent, duct tape will be your lifesaver. Number eight. You do not have a dairy or a supermarket along the way so you will need to take four days worth of high energy food with you. Here is what our group took to give you some ideas. Peanut butter, protein, chocolate bars, honey, bread, dried milk, cereal, canned food like tuna, or pre-packed dehydrated foods which you can find in most shops which sell outdoor and hiking gear. For my re review of the hydrated foods, see my next video. Doc has a checklist of what you could take with you as well, and I will include the link to the checklist below my video. Right, I think that's about it from me for this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. If you have completed the circuit yourself, comment below with your own experiences and advice. And if there's any other topic you'd like me to cover or create a video on, let me know in the comments below.